So the Z is gonna, I'm gonna basically lay another piece up right up on top of this. It's gonna get welded in. Then I'm gonna cut the bottom piece off. So there's your Z. So I'm doing that to get over the front end of my ride. Some guys like to just put something in the front here for a perch welding off, but I wanted to use the original ram horns, or the, not ram horns, the horns, um, to get over the axle. Um, and being that I have, in using a 40 front end, because I wanted the juice, juice brakes option, my springs on this 40 front end actually were in the front, mounted in the front of this axle. You want to try to have it either right over your axle is best case scenario. Scenario, However, you can take and get some of these that slide on for 40, 50 bucks. They slide on all the way up here and you just weld them on and then your spring uh, mounts right to that. And then I can use the original Model A spring perch here. Um, and then I don't have a big ugly front end Reason I wanted to have this motor sticking out a little bit further too is I wanted my front end a little longer. I don't like those stumpy front ends for hot rods. Especially rat rods need to be stretched out and raked up pretty good. So that's kind of what I'm doing there. So I guess just make sure that all your, your bushings and everything are good on these uh, before you put the weight on them. And then when you order your springs, I'm just getting the Model A spring you have to make sure and account for your weight, which is kind of a guessing game. Like my motor weighs about five, 600 pounds. Another, you know, 100 pounds for your radiator and stuff and fluids. So it's kind of a guessing game. I guess if you order what's close and if you have to add some springs, you gotta add them or, you know, you can put some blocks too to raise it up. I'm using this this piece here that I got. I think I paid 40 bucks from a guy who had it. I think it's uh, a Speedway special. You can buy that kind of stuff from Speedway uh, because they want really stupid money for these horns. And I'm cheap, so I'm gonna probably leave this firewall the way it is. I'll clean it up nice. I like the originality. I don't like to cut that stuff out other things I'm doing give you some ideas my visor I have a regular visor sitting there but somebody gave me this awesome old saw blade so that's gonna be my visor Thought that was kind of cool so a lot of guys uh, think that you got to have this transmission bell housing stuffed all the way inside I'm trying to make room because there's not a lot of room in these um, so I've decided being that this is going to be a rat rod I'm gonna have my transmission sticking out so everybody can see all the guts I'll probably this is gonna be a music theme rat hot rod so I'm probably gonna take an old snare drum and wrap it around there kind of like a shroud so as far as like the frame goes in the front I'm gonna Z it um, I have my other piece laying there one thing you want to consider as well is your when you're doing the floors, get some holes cut, get your transmission in there. You're not gonna have a lot of room up there, so make sure everything works. I kind of got a, picked up a 40 brake setup with the power with a booster and everything that I'm gonna make work. When you get stuff for free, you take it, especially when it's brand new and no one's using it. You know, keep in mind, you gotta put a steering wheel in there gas pedal you got to have room for your your shifting this is a st 400 transmission which is a buick um, it's the same thing as a turbo 400 just has a different bell housing so it's got a rounder bell housing because i'm putting a 401 nail head in here uh, another cool tool to get is my wife got me this for christmas it's a contour gauge, makes it easy to cut holes and stuff when you need it. Pretty cheap, real cool tool to have also around the house. 
Most guys will cut right along that rear brace if you have a two-door sedan. I'm gonna have to cut some of that out for my coilover, but that's kind of a good general spot for your axle. That'll make everything, you know, look lined up. You don't want your wheel sticking too far back. I'm also gonna chop this thing, of course, probably about three inches, three and a half inches. But that's probably one of the last things I'll be doing. Something to consider before you start putting the floor in and stuff in is how you're gonna mount that to your body. In, in order for me to do that to that side there, I'm gonna have to probably get my rear windows and everything set up before that because that panel ain't gonna come off once the floor is mounted on there. Window kits aren't that expensive. You get the regulators, window, and handles, and the felt for probably, I don't know, probably under a couple hundred bucks. I think there's a whole kit online you can get for four to $500 for everything, which isn't too bad, and it looks really easy to do. So um, I think once I put my floor in, my handle is gonna be in the way. So my plan is to put a, some type of a cog or gear on there with a chain and move it because I'm building a rat rod, so cooler stuff like that, the better, so. All right, so getting down to it on my Model A. I'm gonna be Zing the front, leaving off from my last video. This is the end result of my frame. I still haven't put the coilovers on yet. Uh, I'm just getting everything set up. Kind of got, uh, my floor started, uh, welded it up to the body so I could set it down and, and get my stance. I'm going with a four inch channel on it and just kind of doing a rough stuff. These, these are just tacked in right now. My main floor ba braces will probably be moved because I'm gonna have to figure in for my seat, uh, you know, how to mount that. I'm gonna have to do some extra frame bracing on the inside as well. Um, just to make it really stiff and so that when I really give her, she's not going to twist on you. I got my four links put in. Pretty simple once you get your frame done. Uh, just I ordered this kit. It was pretty reasonable. It was under 400 bucks. I think it was 300 and I think it was about 300 bucks. Pretty, pretty heavy duty, probably heavier duty than I had to go with, but why the hell not? I had to shorten those bars about six inches. Uh, the longer you go, the better ride you're gonna have. So I've seen guys that have them as short as 12 inches uh, and they work fine. Just gives you a bumpier ride and gives you more, more space and travel between on your axle with that hole there, so it gives you the more articulation, so you have to cut your holes a little bit bigger and whatnot, so. It turned out pretty good, I thought. It uh, put a jack on the frame, raised it and lowered it, nothing pinched up. I think you have to have about a 30 degree angle on your top, and then your bottom ones pretty much run parallel. Just have to make sure that you get some good welds on them. I know on the outsides, you know, I just cut the hole for the axles. You figure about three inches of travel, three, three and a half inches. It's kind of what I figured between my pumpkin and my top of the frame. A lot of guys will, will arch it or put the frame behind them, the pumpkin, and then mount their their coilovers. Mine's gonna line up a little bit different. What I'm gonna have to do is this area here, you can see my markings there. I have to cut that out to get my coilovers because uh, you wanna get those as far out and close to the wheels you possibly can to make it stable. Don't ever put them close, like right here. This is set up for a coilover, but unfortunately I'm not gonna use that 
because it's too too far in. I want to get my coilovers further out. So I'll have them come off of the here and then shoot out towards the, the wheel there. This is just for mock-up. 